Hello again, I'm just going to make a short video today showing the diesel installation. I've been asked about this a lot over the last few years and there is a builder in Russia currently going to fit the same engine as this so he's asked for some information so I hope this helps Boris. So I'll just show you where we are. Um, I'll just anchor because there's, there's absolutely no wind at all and uh, I don't know if you can see down here there are blue crabs swimming around here everywhere. Um, I can't see them now but um, there are dozens of them here and the only problem is I don't have a crab net with me today or any bait so I might have to come back again tomorrow. So this aft deck here was built in basically to accommodate some of the um, things we needed for the diesel. So if you look here, we've got the, the key switch and just a little panel giving you a few warning lights. Um, the engine controls are there. Uh, the fore and aft is a thwartship rather than uh, the, the forward and neutral, a thwartship rather than the fore and aft, which is a bit counterintuitive, but you do get used to it. It's a compromise you have to make on a small boat. And uh, here we have uh, a diesel filter and uh, also the exhaust with the uh, with the gooseneck, um, the exhaust water. So if if I didn't have this um, this bulkhead and this aft deck here, that would all be pretty ugly and, and visible. And I want to keep it out of the elements as well. So the exhaust uh, exits here. It's about 150 mil above the waterline, and you can see the scupper there for the um, uh, for the cockpit drains. So there are two hatches in the cockpit sole. Uh, in the forward section here, we have a PSS seal that's connected to the stern tube. Um, as you can see, the, the bottom of the boat had to be grounded out to get that low enough. So Boris, if you have a look at this, um, it's something we can discuss a little later, but at least you'll understand what I'm talking about. And uh, there's a polyflex coupling between the propeller shaft and the gearbox to absorb some of the vibration. Uh, I've got a water lock muffler here, and on the other side we have a water strainer, and there's a three-way seacock. Um, you can see the hose on here. Uh, the seacock can actually be lifted up to here, and uh, that's off, and put it back onto the raw water. But if we go the other way, uh, we can plug a hose in here, and flush it with fresh water every time after use. So, in the front hatch, this gives us access to the, um, the top of the engine for filling the oil. I just uh, adjusted the alternator built the other day, and um, we've got, uh, this here is the, the piece of spectral rope that actually is the stop for the engine. Comes to a little ring pull here, and uh, that stops the engine. It's it's pretty basic, but um, I think it's a little bit more foolproof than a uh, a cable that can uh, that can uh, cause problems. So we'll go down below and have a look at the access from down below. So I'll go into the starboard quarter berth here. You can see there's a bilge pump there. I've got some sail bags pushed in there. A bilge pump with and that hose can be put anywhere in the boat to pump out wherever we may have any water. And uh, there's a battery switch and voltage sensor relay, which is part of the charging system. So with this hatch removed here, we've got good access around the engine to the engine beds, um, uh, the, the engine mounts. They do need to be adjusted from time to time. We've got the dipstick here for. Uh, the engine oil level uh, to bleed the engine that's done from here and uh, at the front of the engine there you can just see where this this hose here goes into the into the water pump and to adjust the impeller there um, you can see the uh, the hatch at the front hasn't been removed but the whole step the step here and that this hatch gets removed to give access to the front to the front of the engine and also to change the impeller which is pretty important to be able to get to quite easily. So on the port side here we have the other side of the engine uh, we need, need access to the oil filter there as you, as you can see it's tight but 
but I'm quite able to, to get in there. Um, I'll say the ends and mounts again, you do need to adjust those from time to time. And there's the um, uh, gearbox and coupling again. And uh, you can see the seacock on the other side. And that's pretty much it. So, so with the hatch removed, there's good access from here and good access I say when the front one is, is removed as well. Just head back up again. And uh, I say there's, it's tight, but there is good access everywhere from the, uh, from the top as well. So Boris, I hope that answers some questions. Um, gives you a little bit to have a look at. And um, it's just about time for, uh, uh, for a coffee and I'll have a read for a while and see if we get any wind today. As you can see, I'm standing under the, uh, the new Dodger here and uh, I've just got headroom and uh, it's made a really good addition to the boat, particularly when it's an anchor. Right, so absolutely no wind out there at the moment. So I'll stay here in the shade and uh, make a coffee. So it's over and out. Thank you.